Now let's take up the topic of differentiation. Remember that for a function, the derivative of f at x is defined as the limit as h goes to 0 of f of x plus h minus f of x divided by h. The notation is f prime of x. The graphical interpretation is that the derivative of f at x is the slope of the graph of the function of f at x. Here is the slope which is given by this rise over run expression here for a finite non-zero h. Here is the rise over run for a smaller h and in the limit as h goes to zero the rise over run becomes the slope of the graph at the point x and that's the derivative. In some cases the function f is known and it's tractable to carry out the limit. You spend a lot of time in calculus 1a and 1b doing limits of various functions and getting good at it. This allows exact computation of the derivative of a function. In other cases the function f might be known in that it can be evaluated given a value of x but it's too complex to carry out the limit. For example, the function might be a computer program which computes f of x given x and it's simply too difficult or challenging to analytically determine what the limit is. Another possible scenario is that the function f is not known but it's only evaluated or measured at a finite number of points. In other words, only the values x1, f of x1, x2, f of x2, and so on are known and the derivative needs to be estimated from these limited values alone. Another problem is that the evaluation values may known to likely have errors so that the evaluated value at xi is actually the true value plus mu i where mu i is some form of evaluation error. These types of errors will further complicate the estimation of the derivative. We'll definitely look at that in the statistics module which is upcoming.